Hello everybody, John Brewer here. Welcome to my playthrough of The Hunters, U-Boats at War 1939-1943. This game starts in September 1939, at the outbreak of hostilities between Nazi Germany and the United Kingdom. On 1 September 1939, the German army crossed the Polish border and initiated the series of conflicts we've come to know as World War II. The United Kingdom and France gave Germany two days to terminate military operations in Poland, and on 3 September, they formally declared war on Nazi Germany. Ten hours later, U-30, under the command of Captain Lieutenant Fritz Julius Lemp, torpedoed and sank the SS Athenia, and the U-boat war had begun. Three weeks ago, I announced this series, and my viewers submitted both names for my officers and liked the video to select my U-boat number. As it happens, when I'm writing this episode, the count stands at 27 likes, which makes our U-boat for this campaign U-27. By sheer happenstance, that also happens to be historically the first boat of the Type 7A class that we'll be playing as. The historical U-27 was launched in 1935 from Bremen, and sailed a single war patrol. Under Oberleutnant Johann Franz, the U-27 was at sea when war was declared. On 13 September, the U-27 sank the 291-ton Devara, and on the 16th, it sank the 333-ton Rudyard Kipling. On the 20th, the British destroyers HMS Fortune and HMS Forrester depth-charged the U-27 and sank her. The entire crew survived the sinking, but Oberleutnant Johann Franz would never command another U-boat. Before we start, I want to quickly go over the dice that we'll be using in this game. The only dice that I'm going to be talking at length about in this series are the six-sided dice. These are usually called D6s, to distinguish them from dice with more or fewer sides. The Hunters also uses 10-sided die, or D10s, and 20-sided die, or D20s, for target selection, but I'll be handling those rolls off-screen. This session, we'll only be using these dice in the most common way, by rolling one or two D6 and then adding the numbers together. We'll add or subtract any modifiers the game tells us to from the result, and then look up that value on a table to find out what happens in our game. To help illustrate, I'll be showing the die rolls on-screen, along with the modifiers and the possible results. And now, without further ado, I present the officers of the U-27, Dr. Rylus Singleton, Chief Engineer Heinrich Schindler, Second Watch Officer Karl Nietzsche, First Watch Officer Karl Marx, and our Captain, Commandant Helmut Krashtept Kramer. So we join our crew for the first time at the Kriegsmarine base at Wilhelmshaven. Our orders have come down to lay mines off the west coast of Great Britain. The Hunters divides out patrols into different travel locations, and at each one, we roll 2d6 to determine what, if anything, we encounter. Crossing the North Sea, we encounter nothing. We set out in early September, and it takes over a week to sail around the north of Great Britain. Cutting past Fair Isle across the north of Scotland, we encounter nothing. The English Channel would be faster, but it's too dangerous to attempt. We make a wide sweep to the west of Scotland and prepare to lay mines off of Clyde. Historically, our sister ship U-33 will be sunk in a few months performing this very mission, but we hope we have better luck. Under cover of night, we deploy our mines in the Firth of Clyde, and the British are none the wiser. With plenty of fuel and several torpedoes left, we search for prey in the waters around Ireland. We don't find any viable targets in the Celtic Sea, so we swing around the west coast of Ireland in a long loop home. In 1939, the British haven't yet implemented the convoy system yet, and in the Hunters, it shows. We're more than four times as likely to encounter an independently sailing ship than a convoy around the British Isles. In the Malin Sea off Ireland's northeast coast, though, we find something. Aha! A lone, unescorted freighter. The SS Menar, a ship capable of delivering 7,200 tons of supplies to the British. With no escort, this is essentially a firing exercise. Even so, we need to head back to Germany soon. We might as well fire everything we have at her. Each torpedo has one roll to hit, a second roll to see if it was a dud, and finally a damage roll. Fire torpedo tubes, one through four! Torpedo one goes wide and misses Menar completely. Torpedo two connects and detonates. Two points of damage onto the target. Dud torpedoes were a big problem in the early war, and so they are here, too. My steam torpedoes fail a third of the time, and my electric torpedoes are a coin flip in 1939. Torpedo 3 misses. Torpedo 4 hits, and fails to explode. If we wait to reload our torpedoes, RAF aircraft might be overhead before we can finish this ship. 25 shells into our bombardment, we haven't done any appreciable damage. Soon after, though, we get the range, and finally, finally, 
Menar sinks. The Hunters categorizes patrols as successful or unsuccessful. A patrol is successful if you sink at least one ship, or if you complete any special mission you happen to be assigned. In this patrol we did both, mining the Firth of Clyde and sinking the SS Menar. At the end of our trip we have a successful mission. The mines are laid, and 7,200 tons of shipping have been sunk. At this rate, we'll have won the war by Christmas. Thank you for joining me on this first patrol in The Hunters. Join me in our next The Hunters episode, when Commandant Kramer and his crew leave the mines behind and hunt British shipping on the edges of the Atlantic Ocean, and we have our first brush with the Royal Navy. Until then, I'm John Brewer, bringing you better gaming through applied mathematics.